So essentially what just happened, the Kurds in Syria signed a deal with an American oil company to sell them Syrian oil. Yeah. Yeah. So this was broken. This story was broken by Al Monitor, the Kurdish led autonomous administration of northeast Syria has signed an agreement with an American oil company. The agreement to market oil in territory controlled by the U.S.-backed entity and to develop and modernize existing fields was inked last week with the knowledge and encouragement of the White House. The sources named the company as Delta Crescent Energy, which is based in Delaware. They gave no more details and only said they had been in talks for a long time. And then it had received an OFAC license to operate in Syria, which I find very hilarious as if the treasury in the United States has the right to give anyone a license to come and extract Syrian oil. I mean, who are you? And this phrasing also of develop and modernize existing fields. That's a very strange way to say plunder. Yes, I think that's the verb you're looking for, to plunder, meaning to steal. Mike Pompeo, he was testifying at a hearing at the Senate uh, Foreign Relations Committee. And this hearing was like three hours long or something. And I went digging through the footage. And I finally found this like 20 second clip where he talks about it. And he admits, he brazenly admits that, yes, the Kurds are selling us this oil now. And uh, we're fine with it. And we love it. So I, <laughs> I found this clip. And uh, take a look. Thank you very much. Uh, the Caesars Act, uh, thank you for using it quickly and in a holding aside son accountable is a great first step in what I think will be a long journey to punish this regime. Is more coming? Yes, Senator. Uh, thank you. Great job. Um, our, I talked to General Mazloon yesterday with the SDF. Apparently, they've signed a deal with an American oil company. Mm -hmm. to, uh, to modernize the oil fields in northeastern Syria. Are you supportive of that? We are. That would be a great way to help everybody in northeastern Syria. The deal took a little longer, Senator, than we had hoped, and we now we're in implementation. It yeah, could be uh, very powerful. You've been terrific in that regard. Uh Did you hear that? Did you hear that about the Caesars Act at the beginning? Th these people are murderers. They're, they're thugs. They're, they're so callous. They just don't care. Right there, out in the open. Yeah, sure. We are punishing the Syrian people with brutal sanctions, making sure that they starve, and on top of it, we're going to steal their oil. Yes. So, just to, to give you an idea of where this is happening, right? So, this entire area here is controlled by the Syrian government, right? And everything to the east of the Euphrates River, Al Furat, is under Kurdish control, okay? And, and conveniently... Very, very conveniently, all of the oil fields are in their territory, which is why they haven't bothered to take any more. So the, the largest oil fields are over here. So you have Al-Omar oil fields in Deir Zor. And also up here in Hasake, you have the Rmelan and Sueda oil fields. And it's also the breadbasket region. So not only do we have this issue now with them letting the Americans steal the oil. But on top of it, and I reported about this before, is that the Kurds are also withholding food, withholding wheat that belongs to the entire Syrian population. What, what are you supposed to sugarcoat this? Man, they're starving people. These sanctions, the, the Caesar Act, is meant to punish the Syrian population. All sanctions do this, but these sanctions are particularly brutal because they make sure that nobody can trade or do anything with the Syrian government. No reconstruction, no transfer of dollars to, to, help, to facilitate trade, no transfer of food, nothing. Nothing. And so, not only does the Syrian government not have any revenue coming in, but on top of it, the U.S. is burning their crops, Turkey is burning their crops, and the Kurds are like, okay, well, you know, we're not, we're not giving you any wheat, so your problem. And this has been going on for years now. Do you understand? So when I, when I was reporting about the wheat being burnt, which is two months ago, that's not something new. That didn't just start this year. The wheat was being burned for the last couple of years. Do you understand? And you had food shortages for the last couple of years. And these Caesar sanctions are just compounded on top of that. So not only do they control the breadbasket region and they're withholding all of the, the wheat, 
Now they've decided, you know what, we're also going to deprive you of 25% of the government's revenue, which is what the oil used to account for, and giving it away to American corporations. I mean, this is beyond disgusting. Back in November, October, November, when, when Trump, uh, quote unquote, pulled out of Syria, what did he say? He said, we're leaving a few troops behind to guard the oil, right? We have the oil. The oil is secure. Uh, we left troops behind only for the oil. And uh... the whole guise was that, oh, we're just keeping a few troops there to guard the oil so that, you know, the Syrian government is deprived of revenue, of income. And it's, it's just to um, put pressure on Damascus. Well, this completely blows a hole in this narrative that you're just guarding the oil. Now you're making a profit off of it. You're making money off of this thing. You're stealing it. That's not guarding. You're plundering it. We knew this all along. We knew this was coming. When the Americans invaded Iraq and there was widespread looting in Baghdad, there was only one government building, only one ministry that was protected by the U.S. military. Take a wild guess which ministry that was. Some, some starts with, oh, oh, what is, oh, oh, what is that? Oh, oh, oil, oil, that's it. Yeah, the only ministry that the Americans guarded was the Ministry of Oil. Crazy, right? And it just so happens now that the majority of companies taking care of the oil extraction are American. Isn't that weird? Oh, wow. So anyway, look at this. The sources told a monitor that the U.S. government has also agreed to provide two modular refineries to the autonomous administration, but that these would only meet 20% of its refining needs. Let me translate that for you. What that means is that not only is the U.S. government illegally occupying Syria's oil fields, but they are even subsidizing this private corporation, Delta Crescent, to help them steal the oil. They're giving them the tools two modular refineries, and it's going to account for 20% of the extraction. So they're subsidizing this company. They, they literally have a stake in it now. <laughs> you can't make this up. You can't make this up, man. And we already knew this is coming. I mean, even back in October, November, look, you had footage of, of, of American troops in the oil fields. Look at them, man. No shame. Like they own the place. Shameless. Absolutely shameless. Look at them, man, driving through. Look at that. Look at these, man. Look at these. This guy on the left looks like some, some goddamn hick. Looks like he crawled out of a swamp in Alabama or something. Look, who are these fools, man? Who are these hillbillies guarding the oil in Syria? What are they doing there? What? Look, look at this clown, man. He looks like a parody of, of a hick. It's ridiculous. What are you doing? What are you doing there? Oh, and... Before anybody interjects, before any of these nut jobs, the vote blue, no matter who, interject. Yes, Biden would have done and will do the same thing. Top advisor signals that Biden would keep troops in Syria as leverage. Oil. That's what it means. So if you think that Joe Biden is going to be any different from Donald Trump, once again, disproving that completely. Not to mention he helped with Obama to orchestrate the conflict in the first place. We knew they're going to plunder it at one point or another. This, this completely blows a hole in this narrative that, oh, it's, it's just to make sure that ISIS can't take advantage of. We're just guarding it. No, no, no. You're actively plundering it now. And it also blows a hole in this Kurdish narrative that they just want autonomy. No, no, no. When you're letting the fox into the hen house, you're, you're, that's not something about oh, fighting for freedom or whatever some hipster fucking journalist that Vice wants you to believe. Let me tell you, man. They're letting American troops in. They're letting American corporations in. They're letting the enemy in, especially after they quote unquote abandoned you. Now you're working with them again. It's like they don't learn, right? <laughs> they, they just don't learn. And the same thing can be said about the Syrian opposition, right? Al Tanaf. So we, we talked about this last week, right? Over here, this, this little bit of land here controlled by the quote unquote moderate rebels again. Look, Al Tanaf. That's an Air Force base. They, they just let the Americans come in and put in a base. Yeah, sure. Why not, right? Working with the enemy casually, like it's no big deal. I've told you before that oil revenue accounted for 
of the government's revenue, okay? 25%. That's enormous. So I went, I went digging through the IMF reports. I, I had to calculate <laughs> this whole thing in Syrian pounds based on the old uh, exchange rate and then converted it back yeah, and verified it. Yeah, it was 25% of the government's revenue. So they've been deprived of that now for almost a decade. Because ISIS was plundering the oil before, yes. And they were selling it illegally off to Turkey and neighboring countries. Making about $30 million a day. Yeah, it's a lot of money. $30 million a day. It's not a joke. And now the Kurds are taking this stuff. And, and who do you think suffers? Who do you think suffers, man? It's the Syrian population. How are they going to eat? Hmm? you depriving them of their wheat. You're depriving them of any money, any revenue, so that they can buy food, medical supplies. You're putting sanctions on them. It's the Syrian people that are suffering. And, and just to give you an idea of the volume that we're talking about here, right? So the Kurdish-led entity controls most of Syria's oil wealth. And uh, as I said, it's in the Ramelan area, at Sueda oil fields and also the Omar oil fields in Deir ez-Zor. Before the war started in 2011... The country used to produce around 380,000 barrels of crude oil per day. Production is down to around 60,000 barrels per day, much of it refined in makeshift refineries and transported by leaky pipelines causing massive environmental pollution. That's another thing that no one's talking about, that you have birth defects. Yeah, this is really gruesome and heartbreaking. You have birth defects and, and people developing these really harsh and, and horrible uh, breathing difficulties and other illnesses who live in surrounding areas because, you know, when the government infrastructure collapses and you have terrorists and makeshift militias coming in and stealing the oil and trying to refine it on the spot, they're not going to do it in the most environment friendly way. They've been doing it in, I mean, really the most ghetto fashion possible and don't care if any of it leaks or seeps into the environment or damages people's health in surrounding areas. They don't care. They're, all, they're only interested in the money. Do you see what happens now when you remove the central authority and you let infrastructure collapse? There's a million things that nobody takes into account. They don't care. On top of depriving the, the Syrian f people of, of food, of money, of resources, of income, they're, they're also doing this to pressure Iran, okay? They're doing this to pressure Iran indirectly because they don't want Syria supporting Iran. They don't want Syria supporting Hezbollah. They don't want Syria supporting the Palestinian cause. This has always been an issue. This is the whole issue. It's the whole issue. Syria has never bent the knee to Uncle Sam, ever. So, because, because they can't be bought off, because they know that Syria supports Hezbollah, supports Palestine, supports Iran, they've been trying to break it. That's the whole game. And you have very important trade routes also, that go through northeastern Syria that would affect Iran as well. And, I mean, Syria has always been at the center of world trade. You know, Palmyra is where Silk Road is. The Silk Road, where people used to come from China to trade. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of strategic, historical value in, in occupying these lands. Make no mistake. But this is just absolutely disgusting, you know, that, that they would even consider selling this oil to the enemy and... and I think it tells you everything you need to know. This is not about an independence movement or autonomy or something. No, this is about taking control of the most valuable resources, not just oil, but like I said, the breadbasket region where everything is grown, cotton, wheat, lentils, taking control of all these vast swaths of land and those valuable resources and just hoarding them and then letting on top of it, Uncle Sam profit. And, you know, the Kurds are not subject to these Caesar sanctions. But they know they can't sell them to the government in Damascus, so what they're going to do is most likely sell them to the Kurds in Iraq, right? Where they already have an autonomous region. You're not going to hear anything about this in the mainstream media, of course, right? They're not going to tell you anything about this. Oh, no. Shh, 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 shh.